Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and with this video I'm going to start a new series in which I'm going to be making quick videos answering your questions. I'm still going to be making my regular videos, of course, but when I get a question from you that doesn't quite fit into a big category of a review video, I'm going to be making these quick Q&A videos focusing on a single question or a couple of related ones. And so the first question that I have here is, what is going to be the major product this reaction and what's going to be the mechanism here. So the first thing that I'm going to look at is what type of reagents and starting materials I have. We have an alkyl halide uh, as our substrate and we also have polar product solvent which also going to double as our nucleophile. But as we know the alcohols uh, they are generally poor bases and nucleophiles, so that's going to go into the category of poor everything. Also, I have heat here, which can come in handy when we are deciding what type of a mechanism we have in front of us. And since this type of a reaction kind of pushes me towards the realization that that's going to be either a substitution or an elimination reaction, I'm going to recall my predictive model in which we have the uh, different factors that we need to take into consideration when deciding which type of mechanism we have. So in our predictive model we have the position of the living group in the substrate which can be either primary, secondary or tertiary and we also have four different categories of uh, reagents that we can react with. We have a nucleophile only, nucleophile and the base, base only and poor everything. And if I fill my table real quick, I'm going to get the um, outcomes like this. Now, in this particular case, I have the secondary alkyl halide because my living group is sitting on the secondary carbon here, which is connected to two other carbons. And I also have a poor base slash nucleophile, which means that I'm looking at SN1 or E1 reaction. And at this point, temperature does go into come into play because for this type of uh, consideration, when we have SN1 versus E1, the heat is going to promote the E1 reaction rather than SN1. SN1 would be the major mechanism if we had just room temperature or lower temperature. So in this case, I'm going to go with the E1. I'm going to clean up my canvas a little bit so I have some more working space here. So for the E1 mechanism, for the E1 reaction, step number one in this reaction is going to be the leaving group dissociation or the loss of the leaving group. So we are going to show the curved arrow coming from the carbon bromine bond onto the bromine, indicating that we are going to be breaking that bond, which going to give me my corresponding secondary carbocation. And in this case, as soon as I form carbocation in general, not just in this case, uh, I always need to double check for any kind of carbocation rearrangements. So I have my initial carbocation at the secondary position. Nearby, I have the secondary position as well, but I also have a tertiary position over here, which means that in this case, the carbocation rearrangement is going to be extremely likely. And in order to accomplish that, we are going to grab that hydrogen with all of its electrons, and we are going to move that onto the position with our carbocation via the hydride shift. Now, when I have my carbocation, which is going to be now as stable as it can possibly be, because in this case, that is already a tertiary carbocation, so I'm going to indicate it like this. I'm now going to uh, look at what type of uh, reaction we can have from this point on. And also, before we go further, I want to point out that since my carbocation is trigonal planar, I have lost the stereochemistry at this point. So as soon as you have a carbocation at the position where you used to have dashes and wedges, always make sure that you get rid of your dashes and wedges because carbocation will flatten everything. Anyways, coming back to my chemistry here. So since we know that that is going to be an elimination reaction, I'm going to look at the beta positions and the protons in those beta positions. So I have a couple of hydrogens to the right and to the left, since the molecule is symmetrical, uh, they are both going to be identical, so I'm going to call those hydrogen A. And also another option that I have is right over here, that is going to be my hydrogen B. So I have two possible options for my elimination reaction. Methanol in this case is going to play a role of my base, so I can show that methanol comes in and pulls off 
one of my hydrogens from the position A, or I can do something like that for the position B as well. And if I continue with this reaction and show my two possible products, for the hydrogens A, I'm going to get a product that looks like that, and for the hydrogen B, I'm going to get this molecule. So I'm going to call them correspondingly product A and product B over here like that. So now we know that in the case of the E1 reaction, we're always going to form the more substituted double bond, which is known as Zaitsev rule. So in the E1 reaction per Zaitsev rule, we are going to make the more substituted double bond. So if I look at my molecule A, my double bond is connected to one, two, three carbons, while in the molecule B, my double bond is only connected to one, two carbons, which means that molecule A is going to be a more substituted product, so we are going to call that as our Zaitsev product, and that one is going to be our major product. And that's all we have for this reaction. If you like this format of videos, let me know that in the comments below. Also, if you have questions, let me know about that in the comments below as well. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.